talk about having transfer functions that are greater than second order, the circuits that are around that, and sort of how do you begin to start looking at the frequency responses that might happen as a result of that. So I'd like to ground this in an actual circuit and talk about this particular circuit you see over here. Now notice a couple things about the circuit. One is that I have actually buffers, three of them, which are basically op amps created with a gain of one to be able to isolate between various points. So between here, the gain here and here, the gain is one. Between here and here, the gain is one. What is the point of the buffers? Well, the point of the buffers is that this circuit here, R3, C3, does not affect and does not pull from the circuit here, R2, C2, or the circuit R1, C1. All of, all of those remain isolated. And these ideal buffers kind of help these things stay isolated through this whole process. This is great, and it really allows us to kind of partition this in a nice structured way. It also does have a nice sort of flow to it. It does simplify the analysis as well, so that's cool. What is the core circuit in the middle here? Well, this is just a simple RC low-pass filter structure. We know that that has a transfer function of 1 over 1 plus S tau, where tau is the R and the C, and it's the product of those two. So I basically have three of those and three buffers as I go through that. Now you might say, well, what's the resulting transfer function? Well, I go from V in to V1. That gives me one particular transfer function based on this time constant. And I go from here to here, and it gives me a transfer function based on this time constant. And from V2 to V out, it's a transfer function on this time constant. So if I look, look my way towards V out, I'll go, well, V out is 1 over 1 plus S tau from the R3 and R and, and C3. Okay. But then V2 is that same thing for V1. So now it's going to be multiplied of 1 over 1 plus S tau of this times 1 over S tau of this. Add it to the third one, and all of a sudden, I've got three of them. This gives me some really good opportunities as I kind of work through this circuit structure. And in fact, if I have particular values of R1, R2, and R3, like I have over here, I can actually define that I'll have three time constants, R1, C1, R2, C2, and R3, C3. And in so doing, I can go ahead and calculate those time constants. And those actually turn out to correspond to frequencies roughly 50 hertz, 250 hertz, and 2 kilohertz. By the way, in a frequency response, I have those three points sitting right here and here. Excellent. So now the question becomes, okay, this is what my transfer function looks like. I also will have a frequency response by taking the S and making it be J omega. Great. So now I can actually talk about what does a frequency response look like. Now, I'm going to be doing everything here in amplitude, and so you're going to notice in this plot it's log of the amplitude in a, in a log log plot. Typically the way you want to do this to make sure you don't get anything confused um, phase is, of course, sort of like a semi-log x plot, so log-ish on this side, linear here. And sometimes you'll see the discussions of magnitude done in dB, and that's 20 log 10 of x. Sometimes you'll also see dB done in terms of power, and that's usually 10 log 10 of x of, of the power, which is usually an x squared thing. So as a result, it's really 20 log 10 of x, so everything is consistent. Because yeah, you might remember, like, for, for a resistor, it's like voltage squares, current squared. So it's kind of what you're going to expect when you look go between the two. And so you go, well, how does this frequency response look? Well, I'm going to start off with, you know, at very, very low frequencies. I'll notice when the frequency is small in all three cases that the gain here is just a 1, 1, and 1. So just a 1. Everything is straightforward. Great. Then when I get towards the first time constant, which is 50 hertz, I'm going to start seeing I get to a 3 dB point and then dropping off on the 20 dB per decade or the 1 over S type of, of behavior. And then as I continue to 250, what I'm going to see is I get the second one now. It gives me 1 over S squared. And then 2 kilohertz is the third tau, gives me 1 over S cubed. This is again 20, minus 20 dB per decade, 40 dB per decade, 60 dB per decade which is again equivalent to these levels of power laws. So in a log-log space, a straight line is a power law and gives you, the, gives you the resulting size of that power law. I also see I get a phase plot and basically each of these, um, each of these points 
and you might actually call these poles if they're sitting in the denominator. When each of these happen, I'm going to go through an entire 90 degree phase shift. And right at the middle, it's going to be, right at the, at the tau, it's going to be 45. So it's interesting enough that once I get to the first one, I'm near 45. And then I get the second one, it's at basically 135. Next one is then near to 225. I would expect to eventually get to 270 degrees. When I get to the middle one, it really is right at 135, which is a wonderful bit of symmetry. The interesting problem is these two are not quite where I expect them. Why? Well, this one's a little bit lower because what's happening is it's not just the first, um, it's not just the first time constant, but the second time constant's phase is starting to come into play. The phase starts to show up a bit before the mag a bit earlier before the magnitude shifts. So you kind of expect to see it, and you know, it can shift by about five degrees or so, which is about what you would be expecting here. And what you'd expect on the other side is that it I haven't quite settled from all the other stages, so it still hasn't quite got to 225. But otherwise, you can look at a structure like this and it helps you really understand this whole space and kind of see both how the circuit works, different aspects, what buffers do, as well as what happens when you actually want to plot a higher order frequency response.